For more than three decades, Barry Peterson has served as a correspondent for CBS News, filing reports from all around the globe. But now he's telling his toughest, most personal story yet. In 2005, Barry's wife, Jan, was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's disease, and he has chronicled his struggle to care for her and his equally painful decision to start a new relationship. His new book is called Jan's Story, Love Lost to the Long Goodbye of Alzheimer's, and joining us now is Barry Peterson. Thank you, Barry, for being here with us. Um, in 2005, your wife, Jan, who was a vibrant woman, a very successful news anchor and reporter for CBS, CNN, ABC, she had done it all. She's diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. What age was she and what was your first reaction? She was diagnosed at 55, but we later went back and kind of thought about it and decided the first changes had really started when she was only 40 years old. So at 55, we get the diagnosis. We resolve that we're going to fight it. Uh, you know, naive though we were, because you want to believe that you can fight something like that. Mm -hmm. But in point of fact, um, nothing worked. No medication stopped the disease. We don't know what causes the disease. We don't know. There's no indication that you can even do anything to prevent the disease. And, you know, she went from someone who tended to repeat herself until today, where she's someone who can't even make a sentence. But she's still a vibrant vibracious person, vivacious person. She's just somebody who can no longer express herself, and she was a far better writer than I would ever hope to be. So, you know, it's a particularly difficult thing. And looking back before the diagnosis, do you see things that you may have missed, signs that you kind of misjudged, or were there any signs of this? I think part of it, and I think caregivers will tell you that before the diagnosis, there's a vast amount of denial, and even afterward, there's a lot of denial. Before the diagnosis, back when she was in her 40s, I could see her ambition was kind of slipping a little bit. She didn't really want to do the kind of things or find the kind of jobs that she had sought before. And she tended to be home a lot, which should have been my clue. You know, I'd call any time of the day, and she'd often be home. I'm reading a magazine or something like that. We were living in London at the time. She loved museums. She rarely went to a museum. She loved being around people. She hadn't really developed any friendships. And it probably should have clued me in some way that this was not right. Something was wrong here. But, you know, being a guy, being a husband, being the person who loved her, I thought it was just great, you know, because she was home when I called and mm -hmm. I'm in the office when I called or if I'm on a story when I called or that kind of thing. That without ever revolving around you. Yeah, right. right. Without ever putting it all together that this was really probably not a good sign. So things started to progress and then the diagnosis came. So it was little things that she was forgetting. Now it was suddenly big things like driving and is that how it? It's funny, you know, she, the diagnosis came after a three day bout where I say she basically walked into Alzheimer's. Um, I went to work in the morning, came back in the afternoon and she was gone. She was like hearing voices. Um, she did something extraordinary, which is really hard to do. She made a sentence with all the words, but the words were out of order. She would come to bed at night and she'd put on her street clothes, not pajamas. Uh, turn the stove on to cook something full high, walked in and said, I think I'll take a nap now. So I'm like terrified about all of this. Um, and when that was over, she kind of snapped out of it for a while. And it seemed as if she didn't even remember what had happened. But I could see the changes were coming. And they come rapidly. Early onset, researchers believe, is more virulent even than Alzheimer's disease that strikes at a later age. Mm -hmm. There's no good Alzheimer's, obviously, but early tends to go faster. Mm -hmm. And let's fast forward to now. How do you care for her, care for yourself? What have you done in your life to make this process livable? Well, I go see her. She's in a facility near in Denver where we live. and. You know, her mother sent me the most amazing email and said, after we'd put Jan into an assisted living facility, and said, um, Jan's not really with us anymore, and you, Barry, should think about, maybe it's time to have another relationship. So I reached out. Um, I met someone I think is actually wonderfully extraordinary. This is Mary, um, right? This is Mary Nell, and she goes with me on each visit. And when she shows up, Jan like throws her arms open and says, you know, Mary Nell. Uh, and I think that's wonderful. But what the important thing of this is that 
Mary Nell has become a co-caregiver and together we really include Jan. So we call ourselves, you know, there we are, the family of three. And I think that there's always room, there's always going to be room for Jan. We're going to watch over Jan, we're going to take care of Jan. Um, and I think for Mary Nell to have a relationship with a man who comes with a wife, and I'm not ever going to leave Jan under any circumstances, is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. I think it's fairly amazing for a woman to want to do that, and she actually has embraced the role. What was the reaction of your friends, of family, of you having a girlfriend and bringing her into the life of your wife? Mm -hmm. What was the reaction? Um, everywhere from, God, it's wonderful, to kind of dubious, to you never loved her and you've abandoned her. Um, someone told me to my face that I would burn in hell. And I said, well, I accept that. I hope not soon. You know, I want to live a long life. But I, I really understand why people feel that. I think it's really frightening for any of us to contemplate this disease. And people were angry with me uh, about having a relationship. People were angry with me about what Jan's situation is and having her in assisted living. I've come to believe that their anger is because they can look at me and they can be angry with me and they can say, there's the personification of evil. It's because they love Jan. And I think because they really miss her and they miss what she is. So if somehow that makes them feel better to hate me, yeah, I'm okay with that as long as it means that they're doing it because they miss her. Well, it reminds me of until you walk in somebody's shoes, you, mm -hmm. can't, you can't make a judgment. And with this early onset Alzheimer's happening to people in their 30s and 40s and mm -hmm. 50s, it's something that you just can't judge. But do you hope that this book, your book, Jan's Story, opens a dialogue on uh, couples talking about long-term care and, and what they would want for themselves while they're still mm -hmm. mentally apt to do that? You are so prescient when I talk to people, and I've done that much, but when I talk to people, that's what I say to them. Have the conversation with the person you love. Talk about it before you're in our situation. Talk about it before something has happened. Find out first by long-term care insurance. You know, it costs seventy to $100,000 a year. But secondly, mm -hmm. if you're with someone you love, have the conversation now. What would you do? What would I want you to do in this kind of situation? Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, you know what? You'll spend the rest of your life, as I do sometimes, saying, oh my God, am I getting it right? Am I doing um, the right thing? Am I doing the right thing for Jan? Am I doing the right thing for me? Am I doing the right thing for Mary? You know? Mm -hmm. And the, these are all things that if there had been a conversation, I would have learned more and probably felt a lot better about how the, the how all of this basically unfolded. Okay, Barry Peterson, CBS News correspondent and author of Jan's story. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for having me.